Hello everyone, welcome to TechWeb Towards. Today I am going to discuss HTTP triggers and this is the continuation part of our Azure function series. So let's move ahead without wasting time. As you can see all the green highlighted sections I have already covered on in my previous video. I strongly suggest you to watch that one and the link is given in the description of this video. So all the highlighted one with yellow that I am going to discuss today like the pack will discuss HTTP trigger, its development and how we can publish that locally developed trigger to the Azure portal and what are the options we need to do if you want to debug that Azure function either it is deployed on Azure portal or it is uh, developed locally okay so let's move ahead without wasting time so there are prerequisites and suggestions that I would like to share with you one is Visual Studio 2019 is required or higher version on your machine with the sp.net and web development workload and make sure to select the Azure development workload and you can check it by going to the tools get tools and features during installation and to install the latest updates you can go to the help section and check for the updates okay and if you don't have the Azure subscription I strongly recommend you to go and create your free account before you begin this session okay now the portal for the um, uh, accessing the azure one it is portal.azure.com and the basic understanding of c sharp and azure cloud computing services will be very helpful to understand this session let's move ahead so azure functions lets you use visual studio to create local c sharp function projects using c sharp class library project template and then easily publish this project to run in a a scalable serverless environment in Azure. We have discussed all these small terms in my previous session. So you can use a function application to group function as a logical unit. It means we can create one function app and inside that we can get multiple function for easier management, deployment, scaling and sharing of resources. So creating your first function with Visual Visual Studio. So we will create a practical with HTTP trigger will create a function that respond to HTTP request okay it will work on HTTP request and we will run your code locally to verify the function behavior either it is right or wrong and once we check okay yes it is working perfectly fine then we can deploy or you can say publish the project as your functions okay and the most important thing is after doing all your stuff you should clean up your resources which is very very important completing this step incur a small amount of cost maybe a few usd cents or maybe few maybe one or two euros or less in your azure account later we will discuss more triggers like service bus queue timer block and durable functions okay now the moment you will open your visual studio you will just select the option which is create a new project and after clicking a new project you will select the azure function project template how at the top bar in the search section you will type function then you will see azure function template will be available it's a azure function project template it contains c sharp language azure and cloud okay so don't confuse in other options now we have to provide the project name for example for this project i am giving azure services demo and just click on next to create okay then after creating as i said earlier if we are creating a function then there should be one trigger on which trigger we will execute our piece of code so for this session we are selecting http trigger okay what it says c sharp function that will be run whenever it receives an http request and on the right hand side very important properties storage account for http especially we don't need any storage account and authorization level we are selecting anomena means the moment we host this function anyone can use this trigger okay we we'll click on next so after clicking on next the project will be created with the same name that we provided at the azure services demo and there will be class created function onecs host.json and local settings.json okay so because we are creating for http trigger so i will make few changes so instead of giving the name function one or the function name one so we will rename this class name just it looks more meaningful we will say it is a http example or in the function name is also http example and we will also rename this class name to http example very simple now again the important point is what we are doing in this function so this function name contains a run method it is of task type it is asynchronous function and it returns i action result okay and 
in the parameters what we are saying by checking this section we can see what type of trigger it is it is showing it is http trigger okay now we are sure we are using http trigger authorization level anonymous it, is, it can receive get and post both request and there is no route as of now in the parameter name that we are receiving is request this request will contain all the data that will be posted in the query or body in any of the manner okay and the second parameter is log this is very important log is very helpful it is a helper class which will allow you to log the information that you want to note during the execution of your function and we can check this information through different tools maybe app inside okay we can check through that and we will discuss this later in the upcoming sessions now the another important is we can identify the query parameter name if it is there something it is name like we can go request.query giving the name that we are passing into the query string and we can get the value of that name simple and if we are passing something in the body then what we need to do we will use the await because we are using the sync okay now stream reader request.body means every content which which is uh, there in the body we are just reading to the end okay now after receiving the all the content of the body we are just deserializing it and put it, it into the data variable which is of dynamic type now here we are checking if my name is null then it go for data again it is of nullable type and if it is not null then then check for the name but we already have the value in name then it will not go for it so we will get the value from the name variable itself from the query string that we're going to test don't worry i will show you in a practical manner and at the end we are saying if name is null then show this message this http triggered function executed successfully please pass a name in the query string or in the request body or if we have the valid value in the name section then it will say hello the name we provided this http trigger function executed successfully okay and what we are returning actually returning a new ok object result which contains this message okay so let let me show you all these things in a practical manner let me switch to visual studio so here is my Visual Studio. You can see we have the same uh, Azure function. The name is Azure Services Demo. Okay, and we have a class HTTP example, and in that we have this function which is of a static function. Name is HTTP example. Everything is here, and we are returning the OK object. Okay, so let me run this solution to show you how it really works. The moment you run this function, you will see this console window, okay? And in that you can see my function is readily available for get or post request at this address. It is localhost 7071 API HTTP example. Let me copy this URL and paste it into the browser. I pasted this URL into the browser and hit enter. Now you can see what it is saying. This HTTP triggered function executed successfully. This is the same message that I shown you, right? And if I pass some name variable, for example, name equal to tech web dots and hit enter. Now what it is running? Hello tech web dots. This HTTP trigger function is executed successfully. Okay now it's working perfectly fine on our local there is no license required there is nothing required okay and now we are successfully uh, executed the azure function with http trigger let's go back to the presentation now we have seen after running this we will get the output something like this now the next stop important thing is how we can push all these locally developed azure function to portal Okay, and if you have basic idea of Azure cloud services, then you know whatever services that we are creating on the Azure portal, we first should create a resource group. A resource group is a container that holds related resources for an Azure solution and the resource group can include all the resources for the solution or only those resources that you want to manage as a group. Okay, so this act like a container and all the related resources we can put together into this container. So what it really requires when you want to create a resource group, it actually needs a subscription, a valid subscription. Once you will create, you can easily find that. It will be available in the drop down menu here. Okay, then we have to provide the valid name. For example, I have provided Azure Services Demo. This is my resource group name. Okay, and you have to select the region. So I choose the one which is very closest to me so i selected north europe so the moment you will click 
on the next button or on the create button so now your resource group will be created now next important thing is what you will do when you want to really publish your locally developed function to azure portal okay you will go to the application you will right click you will select the publish option the moment you will click on publish you just click on plus icon new you want to create a new profile for publishing and there will be four options as a target to select okay it can be docker registry it can be folder or it can be imported profile okay now because we are talking about the azure portal for publishing section so we will select the azure publisher application to microsoft cloud okay and in the next after clicking that it will show you we can publish this azure function on azure function app which is based on linux which is based on windows or it can be azure function app container because behind the scene when we are publishing the azure function those will obviously will run on azure function app maybe windows or any of the option okay so we will select the windows one if you select if you select on next then you will see my subscription name is available my resource group name is here that we need to select okay one more thing we have to also create a function app so far we created function only but not the function app what function app is it is treated less just like a container in that we can put our all the functions that we have created okay maybe it's a http trigger function it's a block trigger or queue trigger anything okay because we haven't created that function app yet so you can create that function app right away from your visual studio by clicking on this plus icon the moment you will click on this plus icon you will see a separate window okay and in that you have to provide your function name you can give anything so i provided this you will select your subscription name you will select a resource group that we have provided azure services demo you will choose the plan type consumption it means only when your function is running and using the resources of only for that time you have to pay otherwise no okay the selection you have created selected it is not out europe maybe because that is the one which is closest to me and you can also select the azure storage mistakenly i have selected the east us otherwise it will be the same which is closest to me like north europe okay and now the moment you will click on create my function app will be ready to select from this publish window i will select this azure service demo and i will click on finish okay because i have the resource group i have my function app and my function is already available locally on my visual studio and the moment i will click on finish my http trigger function will be available on azure portal as well okay one more thing if you really want to debug that uh, portal published function so you have to select the debug option you have to select this setting configuration it will be available on the same window okay the moment you click on pencil icon you will see all these four properties so you can select in the configuration there will be release or debug option so if you really want to debug select this profile otherwise framework it is the one which is the highest one on your machine okay for me as of at this point of time it is netcore app 3.1 deployment mode self-contained target runtime win x86 okay now this is all what you need to do after publishing once it is successfully published you will see a screen something like this you can see configuration setting from here we can change it is successfully published it is showing okay this is my published profile okay and this is my resource group this is my resource name and the all credential and this is the final site which is generated for me and with this it is already hosted it is available on my azure portal okay from here this icon i can copy this url and one more thing if you really want to debug from your visual studio you will click on three dot and you will just click on this attach debugger what it will do it will debug it will attach that your local debugger to the function which is hosted on azure portal simple one okay so now i will copy this url this url and paste it onto my browser so let me switch to the browser this is my browser and i have pasted that url okay and what message i am getting the same message that i was getting on my local okay so it means my function is successfully hosted and if i provide some name for example if i provide name again tag okay just let's say it's tag if i hit enter here on this what i'm getting is hello tag this http trigger function executed successfully okay it means my my endpoint or you can see my http endpoint is working perfectly fine 
okay and let me show you what are the resources available on my azure portal this is how my azure portal is look like what all i need to select is my resource group because that contains all the required resources that i have created for this demo okay i will click on this so now i can see my resource group and it contains three resources my storage account my function app my app service plan and what i really want to see is my azure service demo which is my function app okay i will click on this now you can see this function app giving me so many options like browsing function app we can refresh it stop it restart it get profile domain delete there are so many options okay but what is more important for me is go to the function section okay now i will click on this now you can see only one function is available which is http example it is a trigger of type http and it is enabled now let me click on this now you can see the overview section is available we can disable it we can get the function url we can refresh it okay we also got the function url after publishing in our visual studio itself that we just used this is the one okay but there are more options available here we can go for code and test option that contains all the information which exists for this http trigger okay it contains type http trigger method get post selected the parameter name the input parameter name was req and and auth level is anonymous we can see the integration if there is any because we can see what it is producing there is no input there is no output but it is working as a http trigger and this is the function name which is executing okay we can monitor it all the logs you can see but we have to set up this app inside okay and we can also get the function key if we want to integrate these thing or we want to see these values okay right right now this isn't so let's go back to the presentation now we have seen how it is working i hope you like this video because what we have seen so far we can see the url was initially look like this the moment if you will directly open the function app but if you will provide the more detailed information means the api the http example so you will see the message like this the http trigger we have already seen and the http example if you would provide type dots so it will show like this hello type dots okay so i hope you like this video if you have any question any suggestion any doubt you can leave that into the comment box your feedback is very important for me and that's the only inspiration for me to create more such videos so see you in the next video where we will discuss more about i mean debugging we have already seen we will discuss variable function and all till then take care see you in the next video bye bye